And this is what I mean about resistance becoming sneakier. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tara East. I'm a blogger, writer, YouTuber and the author of the mystery novel Every Time He Dies. And in this week's video, I want to talk about sneaky procrastination. Stephen Pressfield is well known for his books about resistance, particularly in regards to writing. Resistance, as Pressfield presents it, is the internal struggle, the battle we experience every time we sit down to write. Resistance can stop us on the macro level, so beginning a new project, and the micro level, setting a timer and writing for 30 minutes. Procrastination is the most obvious and common way that resistance can show up for us. But it's not the only way. Self-doubt, criticism, perfectionism, fear, limited internal narratives, and so on. These are all resistance. When you first start taking writing seriously, it is easier to spot how resistance manifests for you. But as time goes on and you start to develop ways to manage your unique form of resistance, Pressfield argues that resistance becomes sneakier. So lately, I've been thinking about this really weird habit I have where I stop writing when the writing is going well. I'm a big fan of using the Pomodoro technique as a way to measure my writing sessions. I set a timer for 25 minutes, I write through, and then I have a five minute break. If I write for three or four hours, that first session is by far the hardest, the second is easier, the middle sessions are the best, and as I sort of start to wind down at the end of four hours, the writing becomes a little bit more tricky again because, you know, tired. So this weird thing that happens is that sometimes I'm just starting to warm up into the story and I suddenly get an idea or a great line or a bit of dialogue or I realize, oh my God, there's this connection I hadn't actually intentionally created. And what happens when I get this sudden idea is that I also get this burst of energy my inspiration increases because of all the possibilities of this new information, or maybe I just feel a bit chuffed. And then here's the crappy part. The burst of energy pushes me out of the story and my cognitive mind comes into play. And all of a sudden I feel really compelled to do something like make a cup of tea or check my emails or most dangerously of all, look at social media. Note, if I go on social media, I don't post about this moment in real time, but there is this weird compulsion to tell somebody, to connect, to share this moment. The problem is there's no one around to share it with, or nobody that will care like I care, at least not in the immediate proximity. I mean, I could send an email to a writing friend, but it's really difficult to recreate that eureka in an email. Sometimes, even when I've slipped into a flow state or I've managed to otherwise immerse myself in the story's world, there is this weird restlessness that can occur and this too can eject me from the story. So it often happens when I'm just starting to feel like I'm getting somewhere with the project. The words are coming out and I can feel the story steamrolling ahead. Now, this is every writer's desired state. In fact, when I did an interview with Shayla Morganson recently, semi-recently, we talked about how this is the magic moment every writer is trying to get to. We all long to reach the point where writing feels more like play than work. I've heard so many people, including myself, talk about how writing is always hardest at the beginning. And what I mean by that is the first 10 to 60 minutes of any given session. I'm giving a wide berth here because we're all different. We talk a lot about how to eliminate distractions and impose self-discipline while writing, 
so that we don't self-sabotage by checking emails or looking at social media. But I've heard few people talk about this weird form of procrastination that can occur during a writing session. You're already writing. And in fact, the writing is going well. And frankly, the procrastination is coming in because the writing is going well. And this is what I mean about resistance becoming sneakier. You might have some solid habits and rules when it comes to writing, such as switching off your phone, writing in distraction-free environments, and ignoring your inner critic, but that doesn't mean that you've beaten resistance for good. When we make writing a habit, not writing feels weird, but it doesn't magically become easier. Usually we just get better at sitting with the discomfort of not knowing what we're doing or the discomfort of how difficult it can be to make something out of nothing. The self-sabotaging behavior of stopping writing when the writing is going well is just one more way that resistance can present itself. So how do you deal with it? Surprisingly, the same way you deal with all forms of resistance. You need to be able to identify what is happening and know that this sudden impulse to check email or make a cup of tea instead of continuing with the scene is resistance and it's trying to keep you and your story small. There are a number of general ways to deal with resistance and they work just as well for this particular scenario as other forms. For example, Cressfield often talks about the idea of choosing to act like a professional instead of an amateur. A professional would stay with the work and follow the session through until the end. If the impulse to stop writing is too great, Spend a minute or two writing about your desire to go and do something or tell somebody and hopefully the act of writing it out will get it out of your system. You can quickly remind yourself why you are writing this book. Little hint here, it can be really useful to write your why on a post-it and keep it near your desk for these exact moments. Looking at your why could help you recommit to the session and if all else fails, Bribe yourself with the promise of a reward after you've finished your session for the day. Now, none of this advice is particularly original, but it's free and easily accessible, which is probably why you've heard it a million times before. Plus, they work, usually. But this video wasn't made as a way to neatly solve all of your issues around resistance. Instead, I filmed this simply because I wanted to bring light to the issue. One, because it's important to be aware of all the ways that resistance can appear in our writing. Two, because resistance becomes sneakier over time. And three, maybe this is something that happens to you and you've also never heard anybody talk about it. You're welcome. I hope it helps. Now I'd love to hear from you. Do you also have this weird habit this weird need to stop writing when the writing is going well. Leave a comment below and tell me all about it. Now, if you'd like even more writing advice, you can of course head to tareast.com and dive into the archives. While you're there, please consider joining my email newsletter. If you do, I'll send you a free gift, plus you'll receive an email in your inbox every single Thursday morning, including a note by me, a quote of the week, some resources I've recently loved and think you will too, as well as some tidbits that I only share via email. Thank you so much for being here and for watching this video. I hope it helps. I hope you related to some of this. Stay safe, stay calm and keep writing because the world actually does need more books.